and welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at HMS Bellerophon, the Tier 3 British Battleship. It requires 2,700 experience to unlock and costs 314,000 credits to purchase without discounts. If you want to skip over to the ship overview and history, there will be a time on screen where you can skip to. Like normal, I'll cover the main features and attributes of the ship. There are 5 double 305mm main battery guns, with a base reload of 30 seconds. One issue with these guns is they have got a very slow turret reverse speed, as when you've got the rudder fully turning, the guns won't actually be able to keep up, so it's a good idea to take the expert marksman skill to combat that. With the fire control system upgrade, the range of fire will reach 15km, which is very good, considering that other ships of this tier have ranges as low as 10.9km, that being the Quachi, and is second only to the South Carolina, which boasts a 15.7km range. For the shells, both types are very good. The armor piercing shells will do a maximum of 8,100 damage on striking the citadel, and the shells will do 5,200 maximum damage if you're firing HE. One thing to note about the high explosive shells that's particularly useful, because they're British they've got a high fire chance, that being a base percentage of 32. So they'd be pretty good when lighting your enemy on fire, then if they've burnt their damage control then you'll be able to switch to armor piercing and then you can maximize the amount of damage that you can do. The secondary armament of this ship consists of 14 102mm guns, which have a range of 3km and a reload of 7.5 seconds. The armour on the ship is fairly standard. It's got the thinnest armour belt of 203mm, the same as the Russian tier 3 Dyaz Suvorov, with others getting close to the 300mm region. There are areas below the waterline and a little in the centre of the side, which do have 254mm, which is good for ships firing at long range to try and get plunging fire. That being said, there is no exposed citadel, so shells will have to get through the belt, but I mean a battleship firing at a flat side will probably have a pretty good chance of getting through to the citadel anyway. For the rest of the ship, the superstructure has 10mm of armour, which will be the main target for ships with low calibre guns. For a majority of the ship, especially near the front and the back, the ship has around 16mm of armour, with only some water level armour ranging from 152 to 178mm in thickness. The main battery armour does range from 76 to 279mm, so if they're hit they will usually be able to absorb quite a lot of damage. While having decent armour, it also has a good health pool of 38.1 thousand, which means it can sustain a good amount of damage throughout the battle. The anti-air on the ship is fairly average. With the improved hull modification you'll get 4 single 40mm guns and 2 single 76.2mm guns. They will provide the ship with a good amount of protection, I mean, it won't stop you from getting attacked, however it probably managed to take a good amount of planes out after they do a couple of runs over you. So then hopefully they'll reconsider and choose someone else to go for next time. The fastest this ship can go is 22.5 knots and has a rudder shift time of 16.3 seconds. Both of these are decent speeds for a ship like this, however, are still relatively slow. Because of both the slow turret reverse and the relatively slow rudder speed, it's a good idea to plan where you're going first, which is sort of where you're going to be most likely to point your guns to make yourself as efficient as possible. The concealment of this ship is what you'd expect from a large battleship. The range is 13.7km, and then when the ship is actually on fire, you can be spotted from a distance of 15.7km. If you have just got this ship, then a camouflage would be good to take as you get a 3% reduction in detectability, which would take you down to 13.28km. But having this with the concealment captain skill, it will take your detectability down 10%, so from 13.7km you'll get to 12.3km instead. The ship has two upgrade slots available, to which I choose the main armaments modification one and the damage control system modification one. The captain skills, a good loadout would be priority target, as it helps see when a destroyer is aiming you, so you can change your course, adrenaline rush, basics of survivability, as you'll be set on fire a good amount, and fire prevention. For the last nine skills, I go for expert marksman, superintendent, and concealment expert. HMS Bellerophon was the lead ship of its class of three dreadnought battleships. The design of the ship was taken from Battleship HMS Dreadnought, which revolutionised the design of the battleship henceforth, and this was completed in February 1909. The design differed from the Dreadnought as it was given some additional armour as well as some improved secondary armament. Another improvement for the, uh, from the HMS Dreadnought is the turbines that were used as they were able to get the ship to a high speed of 21 knots and managed to get to a top speed of 21.6 during her sea trials. 
One thing that's not been implemented into the ship in World of Warships is uh, it also had three 18 inch torpedo tubes. One on each broadside and one at the rear, so I mean, if this was added to the ship it would certainly make some interesting plays. The action the ship saw was fairly standard as she spent her whole career signed to the Hyman Grand Fleet, with the only exception being she participated in the Battle of Jutland and the inconclusive action of 19th of August, which followed the Battle of Jutland where two British cruisers were sunk, one of those being HMS Falmouth and one German battleship was damaged. Following the war she was deemed to be obsolete so she was used as a training ship before she was sold to scrap in 1921. Now that the overview and the history of the ship has been covered, we'll now get into the gameplay. Right, so we're currently playing on Solomon Islands. As you can probably see, I've actually got 33,400 hit points, which is the base amount of hit points that you get on this ship. Um, what I've done is, I've forgotten to basically put every single upgrade that you can have on here. Um, that being the modules, not the actual upgrade upgrades. Those are on there. Um, so effectively, what I'm being the captain of here is a stock ship. The only difference being I've got a camouflage on and I've got premium consumables. Which is actually quite good when I think about it. It may seem quite bad because I've put myself at a bit of a disadvantage, but... The point I'm trying to prove is, is it's still a fairly good ship. You know, you can still do quite a good amount of damage and you can be a sort of key player in, uh, in a game. So, I could have got more damage than I actually did. Um, mainly because, well, first of all, at the moment you can see these ships are... They would now be in range of my guns normally, but I've got to wait quite a bit longer to get in here. So this uh, Ishizuchi is only just getting into my range where I could have already had a fire on him and be half reloading my uh, my salvo. But I do fire them off, and the thing about these guns, they are good, um, and they do have pretty good dispersion, like you can see here. But there are other occasions where you don't get that dispersion now. He did extinguish that fire straight away, so I'm not going to get the burn damage, and he's going to go behind an island, so not really too much I can do there, but that's that's, that's completely fine. Um, so the one thing is, during this game, I could have got more damage as well, because I did also start focusing on the destroyers more as well, because that is one thing that does seem to happen in, I mean, it is more higher tier, well, yeah, they, they, they can be a lot more lethal in higher tier games, obviously, by having, like, say, the Shimakaze with 20k torps, but I mean, a lot of players do also play with 12k, but regardless, they, even at this tier though, they are they can still be pretty lethal, um, especially if anything can stealth torps, so when they're spotted, it's I do try and take them out because the shells, if they hit, can do a pretty good amount of damage, as uh, you will see in this game, so I could have focused more on, say, cruisers and destroy, well, cruisers and battleships, sorry, um, far more, but I did choose instead to go for the destroyers. So currently, uh, chucking a few shots. This V one seventy. See where they go to. Um, okay, so yeah, I did get one hit and I did get a five, but it seems like he's put that out because, uh, yeah, yeah, he's definitely put that out. So I mean, if I can get another hit on him and another fire, that'll be good because that'll be a permanent fire for uh, however long it is before his cooldown is for his uh, repair party. So. Just waiting for these shots to reload now, and uh, instead next I'll go for this Isakazi here. Nope, I will not go for the Isakazi because he has just been unspotted. So, uh, aim back in at this V170, uh, whose engine does appear to be damaged. So, could be quite good. I mean, dispersion is actually looking quite good there, but I think that was more my arrow because uh, that fell a little bit short, so he didn't actually hit anything. Um, Yep, there's a uh, Valkyrie at the moment, and the Charles, and you can just see the uh, NASA behind it as well, so... Not sure, okay, so yeah, it looks like I've gone to the Charleston instead, because he's given me quite a nice side, so... I'll be able to take advantage of that and hopefully get some fires on him. But has just gone unspotted, so... We'll see whether I get any hits on that, which uh, I hope so, and that Valkyrie's also... Ah, okay, we've got a non-penetration, so... Did him, but didn't do any damage, which is a uh, which is a shame. And it looks like he's shooting at the Saint Louis at the moment. Yeah. So I can't really see anything, so it'd just be a fact of wait for my guns to reload and then fire whatever I can see. So here's the Iskazi now. So looks like they're trying to uh, trying to escape now because we are pushing up somewhat, but. They do have a bit of an advantage on numbers though, because they've got more destroyers here than we do. 
but it is a uh, fair fight with the amount that we've got overall with four each. So that was quite a nice hit, 2.6k and a fire on the Iskazi there. And uh, he does, doesn't appear to have put that out maybe. Oh no, yeah he has. Um, he's taking shots. So now he's getting around that corner, I'm going to now go for this Valkyrie instead. Because he's, uh, he's pretty low, his engine's out and it looks like he's about to... Yeah, he's just repaired them there, so he does have to speed up again. So I've dropped some shots on him because, you know, it's obviously... If he's out of the game, that would be kind of good. And I've accidentally rammed... Oh, he's a pink player as well. I do feel quite bad. Yeah, I did say sorry there for that. Cause that was my fault and now he's probably going to have to wait another, another game uh, before that pink goes, but... That's one thing about this game is it's usually most times you go pink usually isn't malicious. Like there obviously are a few times that I have seen where it has been, but uh So I'm sure he'll be okay. Actually it looks like we've got two pinks on our team, we've got the uh, G101. Anyway, we're throwing this uh Nassau now. So hopefully we do get some good shots from we'll see. Okay, we've got two fires and uh, 3.4k. Hopefully he doesn't put them out. So we can nope, that's <laughs> working too soon, he did put those out. But we can carry on firing on him anyway, so uh, keep the HE loaded and hopefully we'll be able to uh, get some more fires on him. Our shell reloading again. That's looking quite good, but uh, I think I overestimated how fast he was going because uh, quite a few of the front didn't didn't go there. So get another another salve off. Uh, Fifteen seconds, and we are currently being. Engaged by the Charleston as well, so as soon as that Nassau's gone around the corner, I'll uh, change my target. But thankfully, I mean, I've still got a good amount of health even without the uh, module upgrade. And now we can get some more shots on and change our target over to the Charleston now. I was looking as well, okay, we've got two fires on him and 3k, so that's going to be a double fire causing quite a bit of damage for uh, however long it is before his cooldown expires. And I was looking at uh, it's just Ishizuchi, because um, I could see the Charleston was going, aiming for me, so I think I was pretty safe getting a broadside, so if I had two people aiming at me, then I probably would have aimed, uh, turned in a bit more uh, Charleston. Um, not too sure what he's doing, so start spacing out these shots a little. And he does seem to be going quite slow, so seems quite good. Yep, got a fire, destroyed uh, one of his guns and his I think that was just a rudder that went as well there, so I'm uh, just shooting these planes. Oh yeah, he's, he's angry and uh, okay, thankfully our Langley has taken him out. So now, we've got our, uh, well you can see there's actually a Langley and the uh, Ishizuchi there. Um, the latter is sailing away, so just get some shots off on him. Let's see what we can do with that. So it doesn't look like we've got any shots on him, but it's fine, we can just keep on firing because uh, it looks like we've definitely got the advantage here. Quite good. Um, this Kazi is near us, but I mean, even if he fires torpedoes, they shouldn't be able to reach anyone because he's quite far away and I'm sailing somewhat away from him. So now uh, go for this Langley. I'm going to switch over to AP here just for the fact of obviously um, I'm not going to be able to shoot that. Uh, battleship over there because he's going out of my range so get some AP and hopefully I can get some citadels or at least some good penetrations on the uh, on the Langley itself there uh, which is oddly enough coming towards us I mean he could have uh, turned around and yeah here the torpedoes come and they run out of range thankfully um, yeah the Langley could have just turned around and he would have still been alive so he could have potentially uh, changed the course of the battle because it was quite far in our favour as you can see but Apparently uh, he doesn't want to, so start getting some shots into him there. So, um, get four over pens, unfortunately, so I mean, HG would have probably been more favourable, but. Now give us a uh, broadside now, so start aiming in and going for another, another salvo. So, because it is quite a slow ship, even though it's saying it'll take about five, six seconds to uh, travel there, I'm still gonna. Just aim right in front because then I can get a nice central shot, which hopefully we'll have to see now. There we go, we get a nice citadel and just secure the cap before our uh, friendly V170 gets the point for that. So that's now two kills and 44,000 damage. 
Two are taking damage from that chance, then I keep AP loaded just for the fact he's giving me a pretty nice broadside and it doesn't look like he's changing course either, so wait for those to reload, all of them so I can get a full salve on him and drop them off. There we go, that's uh, looking like some very nice, nice dispersion there, and we do in fact get a citadel, three penetrations and one over penetration, so 14k, pretty damaging for him, and he's not going to be recovering from that, thankfully. So I'm just deciding whether to go through the middle or start pursuing the uh, Charleston boat here that way, and I'm thinking, well, yeah, because the Danae is going for the uh, battleship over there, the uh, Ishitsuchi, and it's main, mainly it's uh, I'll have more to shoot have effectively. I've just noticed as well, I didn't notice this earlier, but I've just seen what is the Kuma doing over there? The only thing I can think of is maybe our uh, carry was... That was very nice. Um, <laughs> just got a very nice Citadel uh, down the Bogatir, so that certainly hurt him quite a bit. Yeah, there we go, he's <laughs> he's now got 3,000 health. So that was that was a very, very nice shot that I just got on him. Um, so, yeah, he's just dropped torpedoes, he has definitely got him. Yeah, there we go, so that was... Probably quite worth the uh, trade there, taking all of his health for what the Dene had left. So now we're going to come around this island because it looks like the uh, Austin and Bogatir are now starting to fall back. I'll just get around here and um, I say I do wish I had got that gun range because it probably would have been quite useful for a couple of the engagements this game. Going around this island, hopefully we'll be able to see something. I'm now detected so. There's something there, so just hoping one of them will shoot so they actually present themselves to me. Or I catch them up. Either way. So, yep, there we go. The Charleston has just fired there, so I'm keeping AP loaded just because it seems to be working a lot better and it seems more effective against taking out the uh, cruisers too. So, I do get an over-penetration, fortunately, so nothing particularly damaging there, but okay. And there's that Kuma that was there quite a while ago as well, so... got a range of targets to choose from here, and I mean, the only things that are nearby are our two destroyers, so they're not really going to be able to do meaningful damage unless uh, they get within torpedo range. Let's start firing on this Kuma now, and I can sort of see the both tiers there, and I do get a nice Citadel there, which is quite good. And I get a second Citadel on the uh, final, final shot I take, so... Rather good too, so that brings me now to three kills, and I can carry on focusing on this Charleston. However, that is the far run, and he does have deep water torpedoes as well, so it's definitely a priority to take him out. I'm just firing on him as much as I can. And honestly, I did not think that would be a penetration, so that's uh, actually quite good. And he's getting a little bit too close for comfort here. Um, I don't think anyone else is going to be able to do anything with my three kilometer secondaries. They're uh, they're going to be engaging a little too late, so start turning in a little bit because he's probably fired ahead of me. And hopefully one of these does get him. Uh, the dispersion is failing me, but I finally do get a shot on him. So I'm slowing down now because probably going to fire torpedoes with my previous trajectory. Uh, that does get me my fourth kill, so okay, it looks like he's not actually dropped any torpedoes, oddly enough. Now it's just the last last player alive, the Bogatir. So it's just a fact of I've got to kill him before anything else does, and it seems like that's gonna be the case. You secure my win. Did uh, I did whiff that shot quite a bit there. Get the final shot, get the additional four thousand damage. Should get me the kill and the Kraken unleashed. Right, so looking through, it looks like I've only managed to get the personal score results from this game, but as you can see, so it's been a pretty good game, so 183,000 credits, 2.2 thousand experience, so that's a pretty good amount for this uh, this tier, and 143 XP, so you can see I've got the Confederate Award, um, I've got the Kraken Award, and the High Calibre Award, which is quite nice. I mean, and considering it's tier 3, 88,000 damage, it's, it's pretty good, I mean, I was hoping to get more, potentially 6 figures, but regardless, I am quite happy with that, considering how this was effectively a stock ship with five citadels, 46 main battery hits, four incapacitations, five kills, which granted me the Kraken, and nine fires. 
So overall, I'd say it's been a pretty good game. Uh, if you've found this useful, then uh, yeah, make sure to leave a like if there's anything you could see that could be improved with the gameplay or just the overall conveyance of information or anything on this video. And uh, yeah, leave a comment with that. And that's really it. So uh, have a good day. Thanks for watching and goodbye.